scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We discussed a few things uh, in my session yesterday. Let me just do a quick recap for your reminder and then for those who are just... Uh, Coming today, I established a few things, four important points yesterday that was the basis of our discussion. Number one, I did tell us, if you recall, that every believer in Christ is ordained for a life of glory and a life of excellence. That a life of glory, a life of beauty and color and excellence is not just an exclusive preserve for a few believers. It's important that you believe this. Regardless your current situation, regardless your background, regardless the failures around your life, you must believe and you must convince yourself that you and I in Christ have been ordained for a life of glory and a life of excellence. John 15, 16 says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you should go and bear fruit, bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Galatians 1.24, the Bible says, And they glorified God in me. Hallelujah. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says, We are his work. Man, she says, created in Christ Jesus all to good works which God had foreordained that we should walk in them. So, all of these scriptures attest to the fact that every believer, hallelujah, in fact, the Bible says it in a very beautiful way. It says, We are a chosen generation, he calls us a royal priesthood, a peculiar nation. He says, We have been called to show forth. The praises of him who has called us from out of darkness into his marvelous light. So every believer, provided you are in Christ, your receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is your admission into a life of glory and a life of excellence. One more time, your receiving Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior is your bona fide admission. It gives you the basis for a life of victory. So we established that yesterday. The second thing we dealt with very quickly was the fact that um, God is a God of patterns, remember? And that in as much as every believer has been preordained by God to walk in glory, it does not necessarily mean that every believer will walk in that experience. Walking in the experience of the glory demands that you understand that God is a God of patterns. And I told us yesterday that a pattern is a methodology, a predefined pathway that leads to a predictable outcome. Please listen carefully. That a pattern is a predefined pathway that leads to a predictable outcome. Our world today is able to run the way it is because of the power of patterns. Every time you pick your phone and you dial the number, the moment you press send or call, you have initiated a pattern. 
In other words, a pattern that can connect you to a call. And under normal circumstances, it will always work. We travel from one region to the other because a pattern was built in our vehicles that make them move. The pattern of aerodynamics was built in the aircraft that move us from one region to the other. I jokingly challenged us yesterday. I asked our women here, I said, how many of you can guarantee that every time we ask you to cook, you are sure that the food will come out an experience that you would like. Some of you boldly lifted your hands. Some of us don't have that kind of confidence. We lift our hands. We are not exactly sure. We hope to see what happens as we cook. Praise the name of the Lord. But others with confidence that can always be mistaken as pride. We lifted your hands. Because cooking for you has come because you have mastered a pattern. Am I right? And every time you cook using that pattern, that formula, the outcome is already you know it from the beginning that this is what it's about. Hallelujah. There's no woman who has been involved in cooking that cooks and then she's surprised that the food becomes nice. She's only grateful but not surprised because the patterns bring predictability. Hallelujah. So number one, God has called and ordained us into a life of glory. But number two, God is a God of patterns. The manifestation of the glory of God in my life and your life is pattern dependent. To the degree to which we discover and walk in keeping with the patterns that are allotted for the various dimensions of glory, that is the degree to which the glory of God will emanate from our lives. I did take out time to define glory yesterday and I want to talk a bit on that again as a way of recap. I told you generally speaking that the glory of a thing um, is an attempt to describe all the features and the quality in that object or that person that makes that person valuable or desirable. Are we together? So when we talk about the glory of a thing, you have to investigate the various components in that object or that person that makes that person worthy of worship, worthy of admiration. The glory of a fool is in exploring all the features of that fool. What in the fool makes the fool that expensive? What in the fool makes the fool that desirable? So when we talk about the glory of God, we cannot truly understand the glory of God until we take our time to investigate all the attributes of God. The glory of God is a summation of all the attributes of God that makes him God. His goodness, his favor, his power, his wisdom. Are we together now? Yes. Yeah, so glory is not just one generic expression, maybe like wisdom. All of these things are components of the glory of God. Moses said, show me your glory. And God replied, he said, I will let my goodness to pass by me. That is one aspect of his glory. His mercy is an aspect of his glory. His favor is an aspect of his glory. His only shares is an aspect of his glory. His only potence, the ability to know all things. His only presence, his ability to be everywhere. All these are various components of God that makes God God. Are we together? So when we talk about the glory of God finding expression in a man, we now refer to a state where an individual through so alignment and conformity has gotten to a point where all of these attributes aforementioned now begins to find expression in experience in your life. So, we begin to see a dimension of wisdom, a dimension of favor, all the things that can only be found in God, we now see at work in an ordinary man. And at the end of that, if your life truly emanates the glory of God, the end of it is that praise must return to God because your life becomes so exceptional. You see that now? Yes. What manner of man is this Jesus? It was said about Jesus. When he walked in the flesh as the word incarnate, he sealed the storms, he multiplied bread, he manifested the glory of the Father in many ways. And they looked at him at a point and said, What manner of man is this? In other words, we are men too. And we have seen men, but we have not seen this kind of human being. What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? And 
This is the destiny of every believer because Jesus, the Bible says, as he is, he said, so are we. That means my life and your life should be a perpetual revelation of the glory of God. In fact, the apostle calls it living epistles. You know what that means? You are a walking Bible. That if somebody closes his Bible at home, you become the opening, the continuation of his Bible study. That when people look at your life, they can learn God by studying you. They can look at God and say, truly, God can lift men. They can look at your life and say, truly, God can bless men. You see, truly, let me tell you, the believer's life was never supposed to be ordinary. This has nothing to do with being a preacher. It has nothing to do with being a man of God. Every time we talk about an exceptional life for a believer, the only template we have in our minds are men of God who are doing well. We just feel these ones were well, usually anointed, but that's not the case. Everyone, he says, I am the children that the Lord has given me. We are, we are, not I am, we are. All of us together, we are for signs and we are for wonders in Israel. Do you believe that? Ephesians 3 and verse 10, we consider that yesterday Paul was speaking and he says to the intent that now all the principalities and powers might be made known by the church, the multifaceted, manifold wisdom of God. So the assignment is to bring us to a point where we realize that the manifestation of the glory of God is at the mercy of the alignment of the believer. In fact, the Bible says that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as the waters the sea. That means something about my life and something about your life should be a display of the glory of God. That anybody who doubts whether there is a God in heaven, God needs to just refer them to your life and say, study this believer as a verification that I am alive. Are we together? When we come to testify, what are we doing? Testimony is an expression of the manifest hand of God. It's an extension of the revelation of His glory. So when a woman says, I have been barren, say, for 10 years, 20 years, and now God has given me twins. She's not just holding 22 babies. That is a manifestation of something God can do. That is why at the end of it, you can leave your seat and stand up, you can cry, you can wave your hands and say, truly, glory be to God. Because now God has been able to use a vessel to reveal his glory. The first miracle that was recorded in scripture, according to John's synoptic account, is found in John chapter 2. Don't turn there just for your learning. It's called the wedding in Cana. So there was a place called the Can Cana of Galilee. And the Bible tells us Jesus has not even begun his ministry by that time. That it was a feast just like our gathering like this and wine finished. Are we Bible students? And the Bible says that now, you know, embarrassment was imminent. And the people were rolling around wondering what to do. And they spotted Mary, the mother of Jesus, in the crowd. And they walked to her. They said, listen, there is a problem like this. She led them to Jesus and Jesus said, no, my time has not yet come. But Mary now encouraged them and said, listen, whatever he tells you to do, do. And Jesus said, okay, let me provide a solution. He says, go and, and fill six vessels. And when they did, he said, fetch that water and be on your way to the rulers. Go and serve them. Can you imagine that risk? Fetching water and walking to the rulers, the MC, the channel of the occasion, and telling them I just brought one and they taste it and it's water. Those days they did not counsel me, they will hang you and kill you immediately. There was no long discussion for complicating the situation in the feast by now bringing this kind of embarrassment. And the Bible says when they fetched it, as they began to move, that water turned to wine. Am I right on that? And when the rulers took it, they said, ah, but you are not nice people. From the beginning, you gave us rubbish, and after we are filled, you are now bringing that wine. The Bible ends in verse 11 by saying, This beginning of miracles, that's where I'm going to, did Jesus and manifested forth his glory. Is that in your Bible? This beginning of miracles, did Jesus and manifested forth his glory. And the Bible says, The disciples believed on him. So that miracle was not just a showmanship, it was a manifestation of God's glory. In one other instance, I think that should be John 9 or Luke 9, one of the, the synoptic accounts, they found a man 
who was born blind, he was crippled. Born blind, I think. Who seen that this man was born blind? They asked, was it his father or himself? And Jesus said, neither, but that the glory of God might be revealed. The son of God. So that is very important. So one, God desires every believer to be an effulgent, a manifestation of his glory. Number two, the glory of God is pattern dependent. Now let me just talk a bit about that. I did tell us yesterday that every dimension of the glory of God has a pattern that leads to the of God. That means if you want to see the glory of God revealed as favor, please let me have your attention. You don't just sit down and claim glory. No, believers are experts in claiming things. Um, it is not a very wise approach. It's not responsible Christianity. Responsible Christianity brings the believer to a position where they realize that at every time to, to experience any kingdom outcome in your life, it will always be a partnership between the believer and God. It is never all up to God. And it is never all up to the believer. Are we together now? It's very, very important. Jesus is about to heal a man and he puts a clay in his eyes and says, You take the responsibility and go to a pool called Silo and go and wash there. How do you tell a blind man to go to a pool called Silo? Because God will always demand action on the part of the believer. Believing that God will do everything without your active participation is irresponsibility. Are we together? Because God made us free moral agents and our participation is proof that we believe Him and then it gives Him that allowance to make manifest His power in our lives. If you believe all I've said so far, say Amen. Yeah. So, for instance, you want speed in your life. Speed is a dimension of God's glory. And speed is a possibility in the kingdom that every believer can experience. But just claiming speed will leave you frustrated. Are we together? You now have to go to scripture. Listen carefully. You have to go to scripture. So you see, the Bible, this Bible that you carry, is a compendium of the various pathways that lead to different dimensions of God's glory. Various pathways. If I want speed in my life, as an expression of God's glory, I need to go and search in the scripture. Who experienced speed in the Bible? And what happened? What was the business of that man with God that translated into a life of speed? For instance, the Bible says, And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. Is that in your Bible? It says, And he ran on their foot. Can you imagine? And overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Jezreel. Another example of speed was that Jesus was sleeping and the disciples went on their journey. They were six hours ahead of him and Jesus got up from the place of prayer and walked on water and met them. So we know from scripture that speed is a possibility. But what are the principles connected to speed? We see Elijah was a man of prayer. Jesus submitted himself to prayer. Now I see that prayer is one of the ingredients. Are you seeing it now? You now bring prayer as one of the ingredients that controls speed as a manifestation of the grace of God. Another is the prophetic by this time tomorrow. A nation that had exhausted their economic options and it was clear that they were going to die of famine. A prophet stands and in within 24 hours makes a decree and that's the end of it. Or oh, I want to see the manifestation of God's glory revealed as restoration in my life. I have lost things, for instance. I have lost people, for instance. And I want that restored. Is that a possibility in the Bible? The Bible says that I will restore unto you the years. Is that true? God can restore years. God can restore things. But how does it happen? Just claiming restoration will leave you a frustrated believer. Like many people are now. Many believers have found the truth written in scripture, but they've not been able to walk in it because understanding the pattern that controls that manifestation of glory has largely not been taught believers. So if you lose money, maybe in some business or something, as a believer, there is always hope for you. But how does that restoration come? You now go back to the Bible. Who lost what in the Bible and how did it return? Number 
command the axe head that floated. Alas, master, for it was born. How did it come back? The prophet said, don't worry. The prophet is what is responsible for restoration. He said, where fell it? And with prophetic direction, are we together now? Yes, the axe head floated. How about the wife of the sons of the prophet? Who she was going, her husband was going, they died. Most likely of frustration. Are we together? And the predators have come to take out two children, representing her future. Can you imagine that? The woman went quickly to the prophet and he said, What do you have in your house? The prophetic always is responsible for restoration. That means if you lose things, what you need to do is to find a way of bringing the prophetic within your environment. And that declaration of even is genuine prophetic, authentic prophetic, it can now become the basis for your restoration. Oh, I want the glory of God revealed in my life as spiritual power. I want authentic, genuine, anointing spiritual power. Go back to the scripture. Who became powerful in the Bible? Who once was not powerful? The apostles. Ordinary fishermen, ordinary men, they later became men of power. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, speaking about these men, it says that with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says great grace was upon them all. So what transcended ordinary, naive men, largely fishers of men, and men who were about their business, what kind of transition evolved them to become men and women of power? The first thing we learn from their lives is that getting genuine spiritual power does not happen overnight. It took them a period of three and a half years of a combination of sound mentorship. Are we together? Sound mentorship, periodic supervision, and then an impartation. The one authentic power is beyond just bringing a handkerchief and oil. That is wonderful. But you are never genuinely anointed that way. The first basis for being anointed is that your mind and your spiritual understanding must be enlightened because when the vessel is small, it will make the oil look small. So you expand the vessel because the oil will always assume the shape and the size of the vessel. Are we together? Yes. So apostle, I want to become a mighty man of God. I want the glory of God to flow, to flow through my life. Follow the pathway of the apostles. Three and a half years of daily constructive mentorship. He began his training, teaching them what we call the Beatitudes. Helping them to understand the ways of the kingdom. Then he gave them room to ask him questions. They followed him for his crusades. They watched the wonder-working power of Jesus. They had to leave many things that they were doing. Are we together? Are we together? Many times they were confused. Having taught them for a few years, he sent them two by two. He sent them seven by seven. They returned back rejoicing and saying, even the demons were subject to us in your name. He said, don't get carried away. We are still students. Let's continue our lectures. And the discussion continued. They ran away from him. This man had been with him for three and a half years. And in three days, they ran away. All of them. Peter himself. Remember the one who said, I will not go anywhere with you. He ran away himself. And then Jesus tells them, how he talks them, he said, Tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one accord. The Bible says, Suddenly there was a sound that came from heaven and filled the room, and the saw what looked like cloven tongues as a fire. It came and rested upon each one of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, and that was the beginning. Of the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the church, to the point that this this man became so powerful, they could stand at the beautiful Peter and John going to pray in the hour of prayer. They saw a man who had been crippled. I hope you know that even when they were disciples, that man had been there a long time. They remembered him. They said, "No, no more. We are people of power now." He said, "Look on us. Silver and gold we do not have, but such as I have." The question is, at what point did he have it? Such as I have, give I unto you. In 
the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, and the man was staring at them. And you know the guy that used to pray, how many years have you been praying? He said, no, I'm different now. Something has happened. He held his hand and lifted him, and the Bible says he lived to Most times, we do not get Bible results because we do not follow Bible pathways. We invent our own ways and hope that God will just see it with power or see it with authority. Show us the ancient path. You lead us along. We turn the highway. We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter the rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along? We turn the highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter the rest. The things that are written at four times, the Bible says, they are for our learning, so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find them. That means everything you read in this Bible is not a lie. Let God be true and all men liars. But whether what is written here will find expression in your life depends on your understanding the patterns of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Now let, let's go to today's teaching. Everything we have discussed was just a recap. Whatever I stop, we will pray. I just felt to talk to us a bit today on the subject of grace, connecting uh, with our teaching since you are talking about grace and glory. What is the grace of God? You've heard that word grace, grace, and um, I think believers have largely not had a thorough understanding of the concept of the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. This media gave it to us 15, 10. I'd like us to read together when we have it projected. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. Will it be projected? Okay, thank you. Let's read. Ready? One to read. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Stop, stop, stop. No rush. Look at it again. How did I become? By the grace of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Paul is speaking now. But he says, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than he all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. So we see clearly from this scripture that the grace of God is the principal factor behind the transition of men to become men of power. When you see a man that is greatly anointed, a man who is greatly used by God, you usually say this is a very anointed man, or this man carries grace. So we know subconsciously that grace is behind every unusual manifestation in the kingdom. And you are correct at that. Are we together? Let me show you one more scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 8 and 9. Especially wait for a media to look at it. It says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Paul is, is praying now. That it might depart from me. Verse 9. And he said unto me. So Paul the thorn in his flesh. He was praying that God would take it away. And here's how God replies a man. Who feels insufficient. Here's how God replies a man. Who feels incapacitated. Here's how God replies a man. Who desires more. He says my grace. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. That means within the understanding of my grace is your sufficiency. You know what sufficiency is? Sufficiency is the capacity to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing. Hallelujah. I am what I am by 
have the grace of God. What is the grace of God? Please write. The grace of God in simple terms is his supernatural empowerment within and upon a believer. The grace of God refers to his supernatural empowerment within and upon the believer. His supernatural empowerment within and upon the believer. Hallelujah. It's as simple as that. When we talk about the grace of God, we're talking about his supernatural empowerment within and upon a believer. And it grants you access to a plethora of possibilities in the kingdom. There are many things. Now, the grace of God, generically speaking, just for your understanding, I consider the grace of God as a warehouse. Look up, please. A warehouse where God keeps every possibility that he has. And that from that warehouse, you can draw out all that is required for life and for godliness. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That is the definition of grace. All blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So, the wisdom of God is actually the grace of God. The power of God is the grace of God. The mercy of God is the grace of God. Every attribute of God, like His glory, that flows to the believer, routed through the office of the Christ, is called grace. When it has to do with grace, it is exclusively the office of Christ that is the sole administrator, are we together now, of the grace of God. So there is no other way of accessing the grace of God outside of the office of the Christ. Paul says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. But when it has to do with grace, it is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is exclusively within the office of the Christ, as far as the administration of grace is concerned. So let me just give us a basic understanding and we'll pray. Now, there are two kinds of graces that the Bible teaches. And please, I want you to get this. If you do not understand this, your Christian experience will, will swing like a pendulum from one imbalance to the other. It's brought a lot of trouble in the body of Christ trying to understand and explain the concept of grace. You would hear different concepts from one extreme to the other and both extremes are not necessarily wrong. They are just incomplete. Are we together? I am attempting now by these uh, expressions to give us a holistic capture of God's idea of grace. So the Bible teaches us uh, that there are two kinds of grace. Number one, very quickly, is called saving grace. Please write it down. The first dimension of grace as revealed in scripture is called saving grace. Grace. Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. Saving grace. Titus 2 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Is that one? Please look for it for me. Or is it 11? I think I missed one. 11 now. The grace of God. Please correct it for us, media. It says the grace of God that bringeth salvation. The grace that does what? The grace of God that brings, please correct it, 2 and verse 1, 11. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to who? Now keep that scripture here. Three things. Number one, that there is a dimension of grace that brings salvation. And that that grace appears to how many men? Amen. So when it has to do with accessing that grace, all men are qualified. Provided we believe the report of the Lord, that grace is able to administer salvation to you. The grace of God 
that bringeth salvation. There's no time to describe how this grace works because when it has to do with this dimension of grace, man does not play any active role except to believe. That's it. Are we together? The entire work that administers that grace was done by Jesus alone. The, the entire span of his substitutionary sacrifice from his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his exaltation at the right hand of the Father. No man assisted him in dying. No man assist, assisted him in defeating hell, Satan, and the grave. He resurrected by the power of God. Are we together? Yes. So the only thing we do is to believe that message. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, he says, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. Saving grace. Now, the mistake in the body of Christ is that most people believe that this is the only dimension of grace. So, when we talk about this dimension of grace, man does not do anything. All that you do is to receive by faith. And the moment you receive by faith, eternal life, that life of God, is imparted into your spirit. It is the grace that brings salvation and it appears to all men. All men. It didn't say believers. In fact, without that grace, you cannot become a believer. Because all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Are we together? Unfortunately, respectfully so, but unfortunately, many believers have lived irresponsible Christian lives and have not been able to come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ because um, our theology pegs at this dimension of grace. And so, from this kind of understanding, uh, when I speak, I speak in love to the body of Christ, but my assignment is to help us become people of stature, even in this conference. So we translate this theology of grace to now imagine that the believer has no responsibility again. Everything has been done. Yours is just to receive. You are right when you are speaking about the saving grace. But when you are talking of the dynamics of manifesting and becoming, no sir. No sir. It is the reason why many, many believers do not become people of maturity and stature. So they do not know that there is a pathway that demands the active participation of that believer. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. Salvation is a gift. But there are many other things that are rewards. You are intelligent enough to know that a reward is not a gift. If I give you a gift, that gift does not depend on your state. It depends on my perception of you and my will. Am I right? I can give a criminal a gift. It does not have anything to do with him. But a reward, the, a reward is a product of diligence. Are we together? Do you not know that the same God who gives gifts to all men is also called the rewarder? Is that in your Bible? Yes. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must come believing that he is, he exists, and that he is the rewarder of not all men, of them that diligently. So there is a relationship between diligence and reward. Even in heaven, there are seven rewards according to scripture, seven kinds of crowns that will be given to believers. Not all believers will have the same thing. It's in your Bible. There is the Victor's crown. There is the Matthias crown. Salvation is for all men, but reward is not for all men. In the parable of the talent, Matthew 25, my Bible says he gave unto one, five. He gave unto one, two. He gave unto one, one. Not according to his love for them, according to their several abilities. At the end of that story, you will see that he was right to have this Listen, if you do not understand this, um, your Christian experience may be very, very, you will experience a lot of frustration. So people keep saying things like, God, if it's true that you died for all men, you've given us all things, why is my life like this? Financially, I'm down. Every other thing, why it looks like you prefer others to me, it is because they have not understood the second dimension of grace that I want to show you now. It's called enabling grace. Write it down, please. 
The second dimension of grace is called enabling grace. E N A B L I N G. Enabling grace. Enabling grace. What is that kind of grace and how does it work? Now, the first dimension of grace does not demand anything on your part except believing. Listen carefully. The second dimension of grace demands you doing, but the strength does not come from you. The action comes from you, but the strength to do does not come from you. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. It says, I can do all things. If I do it to us, please. Is God helping somebody? Yes. Philippians 4 13. Please look up. Let's read the first three words. The first three words. Ready? One to read. One more time. No, no, no. Just the first three words. One to read. One more time. Who can do? Not God. Paul is speaking and saying, I can do. I can do. There is a responsibility. There is an action. But the strengthening does not come from me. It comes from Christ. It's the great word Christos. The anointing. There is an increasing that comes upon me. But I do. When Samson, an example of a man who used the enabling grace in the Bible was a man called Samson. He was an ordinary man. The fighting to defeat the Philistines was done by him. But the power to defeat 3,000 people as a single man did not come from him. Are we together now? Yes. You need to understand this. It's called enabling grace. So that enabling grace comes upon your business. You will do the buying and selling, but the supernatural resource is not from you. Are we together now? Yes. When the enabling grace comes upon you as a parent, you will do the training of the children, but the extra, there is an amplification of results, but the, there is an action, a demand from you. Saving grace, enabling grace. Now, the second, let me give you one more difference. Saving grace is once, and when it happens, that's it. But enabling grace can grow. Saving grace does not grow. But enabling grace can grow. So when he says grace and peace be multiplied unto you, saving grace does not grow. Once you are saved, you believe in Jesus, you are saved. But enabling grace grows. That means you can have different levels of that grace. And it is knowledge dependent. Is someone else sure? That the enabling grace that comes upon you is knowledge dependent. That means you can see two people. They are all saved. They've encountered the same grace. But the possibilities that they command differ because that grace and peace comes through knowledge. There is something you can know that creates an acceptance for you in the spirit. And you are able to operate at a higher frequency of grace. Is someone like me? So enabling grace is knowledge dependent. It grows through knowledge. First Peter, Second Peter chapter 1, 2 to 4. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1, 2 to 4. Second Peter chapter 1, 2 to 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How? Through the knowledge How? of God. Through the knowledge of Through the knowledge. And of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, read verse 3. According as his divine power, the same grace now, have given us what? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. But that true knowledge, the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. I like the next verse. It says, Wherefore, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. So the Bible tells us that grace and peace, the enabling grace, you don't receive Jesus Christ and then the salvation expires by the next day. No. You understand? Once you are saved, your salvation is valid. But knowledge, that enabling grace, you can have more of it. 
Acts chapter 2, they received the Holy Ghost, the power of God came on them. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. Are we together now? To the point that the building shook. You could see that transition happening to all the disciples. Enabling grace. Enabling grace. Enabling grace. So you can define the degree of the grace of God that you walk in by your appetite to partner with the Holy Spirit to knowledge and engage all the forces in the kingdom that are allocated for the manifestation of grace. For the purpose of our discussion, I will give you three keys. Can I give you three keys? Three keys very quickly that control the manifestation and the multiplication of grace. You want these keys, I assure you and I guarantee you by the God of heaven that you will find your Christian life an adventure that will live in heaven. Three keys. Can I give you the first? Number one, the first key that controls the manifestation and the multiplication of grace in the life of the believer is the ministry of prayer. Write it down, please. The ministry of prayer. That when a believer submits himself strategically to the ministry of prayer, we understand it. Most of what believers do is not prayer, unfortunately. It's a desecration of spiritual energy that is largely in ignorance. The strength of prayer is knowledge, not energy that is desecrated. There is such a thing as praying and this, and the Bible records it, that an individual can be sincere and well-intentioned. Listen to me. If your prayer is not God-based, you are praying and this. It does not matter the kind of energy you are dissipating. The moment your prayer is not word based, you see, God, listen to me, God is touched by the feelings of our infirmity, but is only moved by his word. Your feelings does not move God to action. God himself, Jesus Christ, has submitted himself to his own word, that he has exalted his word even above his name. Are we together? Yes. So, whipping up emotional sentiments and saying, I'm crying, I know God will see me through my tears. Of course, no, it does not work that way. The Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his soul. So, there are many believers who keep whipping up emotions and say, God, you are watching me go through this and you are not doing anything about it. How does Jesus, your Jesus, full of grace and truth, Looks at a man called Blind Bartimaeus passing through Jericho. Remember that story? And then, do you, you know Jesus would have passed that man? The miracle of that. Jesus would have passed him and not felt guilty about it. So Jesus is walking and here is a blind man and the power to heal is with him and yet he's moving. The man calls on him, Thou son of David. Have mercy on me. The people said, Shut up, don't be so the master. I said, No, we are looking quiet. You have eyes that are seen. We are blind. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus comes to him and is acting almost sarcastic. What should I do for you? I mean, I mean, look at this. You will call it pride. If Jesus walked to your uncle or your father or your mother and they be there that day and says, What should I do for you? And the man only said that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, that's fine. And that miracle happened. Same thing happened with the woman with the issue of God. Jesus was on his way to the house of Jairus to raise his 12-year-old daughter who had just died. And there was a woman, 12 years old, with the issue of blood. That means the day that small girl was born, that was the day that woman's problem started. They were all 12 years old. And he said, you are going to want to kill a 12-year-old girl, but I've been, as an adult, going to pay for 12 years. I won't let you pass me like this if I may not touch the hair of his garment. Is someone learning now? This is very, very important for you to know and to understand. So God will always demand participation from believers. He will demand a show of responsibility. The Bible says in Mark chapter 11 and verse 24, Jesus was teaching about the fig tree and he uses it to teach on faith. He says, very, very, I say unto you, what thing soever ye desire. He says, when ye pray, when ye pray, when ye pray, not if ye pray, when ye pray, 
believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Hallelujah. Prayer is very powerful, but he belongs, he says, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Jude 20, just one verse. So Jude chapter 1 and then verse 20. But he belongs, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. He says, pray, 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 pray in the Holy Ghost. You can, prayer can evolve you from a weak you to a strong you. Prayer can evolve you from a timid you to a powerful you. You know how, as we, we teach in biology, how insects metamorphose from egg, larva, pupa, and adult. A believer can transit into these various spiritual states, and prayer is one of the platforms. The primary assignment of prayer, like we have heard me teach, is for your transformation. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, the he being Jesus, he says the fashion of his countenance were altered and his raiment became white and grisly. When we pray, we are changed. When we pray, we are transformed. Show me a weak believer. Submit that believer strategically to the ministry of systemic prayer. I show you a sign and a wonder evolving. Many believers do not pray. We pray sympathetic prayer. We pray faithless prayer. We pray abyss and we pray religious prayers. And that is why it does not come with power. Because the Bible says that the fervent and the effectual prayer. Take note of two expressions here. Fervent, number two, effectual. What makes prayer effectual is its word compliance. The degree to which your prayer is what compliant is what makes it effectual. What makes your prayer fervent is that it comes from your heart. In fact, other expressions say the heartfelt. So your prayer is heartfelt, your prayer is effectual. If your prayer is not well compliant, crying out lamentations to heaven will only attract the mercy of God. But when you want God to act, there is a basis. Hallelujah. So the ministry of prayer, we're talking about the channels that help to release and to multiply the grace of God upon the man's life. Number two, very quickly, the second channel is the word of God, investing in the word of God, spiritual understanding. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. It's a scripture that just came to my spirit. I believe that's the scripture. Please give it to us and that's Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Colossians, not first Samuel, Colossians C O L, Colossians 1 and verse 9. Verse 9. For this cause, let's read it together. One to read. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it. Do not cease to pray for you, uh -huh, and to desire that he might be filled with number one, the knowledge of his will, number two, all wisdom, number three, spiritual understanding. This is Paul praying over the church of Colossae and expressing his desire that they may be filled with three components of the word. Number one, knowledge of the will of God. Contained in the word of God is the knowledge of his will. Number two, contained in the word of God is the manifestation of all wisdom. Number three, contained within the word of God is capacity for spiritual understanding. You see, it is not what you do in the kingdom that produces results. It is the understanding that backs what you do. The sons of Sceva said, we are joined by God. They were just speaking. It was a religious activity. The demons replied and said, Jesus, we know because of his understanding. Paul, we know, but we do not know him. In other words, your action is not supported by understanding. So someone can take communion, but not by understanding. Someone can pray, but not by understanding. Someone can carry a seed, and what you are doing in the spirit is just donation, not giving. 
There is no spiritual transaction happening there because it was not about the money. This is the reason why, if you're a man of God here, listen, before you engage people in spiritual activities, you owe them to construct their understanding so that that action will come with faith. Are we together? There are people who can carry, for instance, a jar of oil and just anoint themselves and believe that by doing that they were anointed. No. It is your understanding that converts that process from nonsense or a spiritual activity. The same oil you are using is what somebody is frying there with it. Are we together? It was all from a tree. So that oil itself does not anoint. It is your understanding that gives room for its empowerment. It's the reason why, respectfully speaking, our Christian activities are full of burdensome rituals that seldom carry power. Because we are more interested in the religiosity of the activity and not the understanding. So someone can carry a million naira and come and drop it here and return back rejoicing. And you ask him, what did you do? And the person says, I gave. You gave God. What do you understand by giving? There is no harvest that returns because the person does not have an understanding. Remember, people were giving offering and Jesus went to the offering with basket and was just watching. It's not the money. And he saw a woman who came with understanding and dropped her might and said, I found somebody in that church. Look at the ratio of giving to those who understood. One to all the men. We don't know how many people gave. But Jesus never commended them. But one woman came. Many things that we're doing. Oh, you were just told, pray in the morning, pray in the night, and you're just reading religiously. Understanding is powerful. The Bible says, then open in their understanding that they might understand the scripture. If any two shall agree as touched anything, how many of you have been around so many people around you, yet solutions did not come? Because it's not just, the Bible says, if any of you shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done. Is that not in your Bible? So why is it that you can be in trouble and yet you have a, a brother, a sister, and you cannot agree? Because number one, you don't even believe it. Number two, you largely don't even understand what Jesus was saying. Listen, by this conference, I am praying that God will plant in you an appetite for spiritual understanding. Yeah. And when we talk back, and with the determination of an archaeologist, we begin to search through scripture. Are we together? The basis for the things that you do, the actions that you take, no matter how well intentioned the actions are, if they are not sponsored by sufficient knowledge and understanding, they will fail to deliver as promised. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We can bring a sick body out here now and you will be delivered. I can even give you the Bible to put it on the person and lay your hands and watch whether that person is going to be healed. So did God lie? No. Interfacing every promise is understanding. Understanding is the new wife that connects prophecies and manifestations. Promises and your manifestations. Is someone learning? So prayer and understanding of scripture. You must submit yourself to the learning of scripture. Submit yourself to the learning of scripture. Submit yourself to the learning of scripture. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Every time the devil comes, he deceives men by casting a spell of blindness upon their mind. Ephesians 4 18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God to the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. Hallelujah. You want to rise, you want to soar, it is going to be by revelation. Galatians 1 verse 2. I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. We go up by revelation. We do not go up by sentiment. Galatians 2, 2. I went up by revelation. You want to rise in the spirit, you go up by revelation. How many of you know that the concept of traffic only happens when you are using vehicles? It only happens on the ground. In the air, there's no traffic. Once a plane leaves, nothing stops in the game until it arrives. But you can drive with speed and at a junction, you just stop there. And may God help you that there are no cars left. May God help you that somebody else's car that is not your car. But just because his car is spoiled on the road, it will affect you. 
you will remain there angrily for your sixteen. You will complain, and may it not be a truck. And may it not be that the truck fell. Let it just be that the tires fall so that they can quickly walk on it. But if that truck turned upside down and landed there, you will remain there forever, but not in the air. That is the reason why planes can fly. The journey from Abuja to Lagos is about 10 to 12 hours non stop. And the same distance is 15 minutes exactly in the air. And can be faster depending on the aircraft you are using. What compresses 12 hours to 15 minutes is called speed. Speed, that level of speed is not possible on ground. It's only possible. So it says, come up here. You can write it in the street. I'm with you now. And don't, when you see people soaring in destiny, don't be angry. It depends on the vehicle they are using. And, and what, 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 um, what, what, uh, what, what fare some are driving on ground. There are many ways to get to Lagos. You can trek. And most likely you will die before you arrive. Or you will reach for a long time and be sick for a very, very long time. You can use a, uh, what they call it, this bike that makes a lot of noise, power bike, and hope that the back roads so won't kill you. You can use a car, your dogs, or your luxurious, and hope that there will not be robbers on the road. Am I right on that? Yes. yes. You can use even a more aircraft, you can use commercial, and be patient until the time agreed by the airline. And if they shift it, you wait. You can have your own charter that now gives you access to your own time. Then you can own the aircraft yourself and leave it in the night when there is nobody. The possibilities are there, but they depend. This is how it is in the street. So when you find somebody in one year getting another person's result of 20 years, it is a possibility. Come on, Peter. I went up by revelation. Something you can know can give you tremendous access in the spirit to favor, to power, to wealth, to grace. Another person can be saving money, respectfully speaking, because he's hoping to buy land. And he will ask, How much is a plot of land in Abuja? And we say, Well, we can manage for 50 million, and the person wants to collapse. How many lifetimes will I say that kind of money? And yet, another person will come accessing the keys to favor according to Alexander 44 and verse 3. It says they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their arms save them, but thou, O Lord. Are we together now? It says in Psalm 44 and verse 3. It was I want someone to see that. But thy right hand and thy arm. Someone can come and say to Sir, uh, the Lord led me. That I should give you one hectare of land. Now the person comes to say, I'm a proud owner of a hectare of land. And you say, No, land is not fair. You are right. You define your possibilities based on the knowledge that you have, the effulgence of the grace and the glory of God upon your life. It's not just dependent on the love of God, it's dependent on your spiritual understanding. Apostle, everybody hates me. No. Something about your not understanding the ways of God is what is programming that possibility. Listen, the Bible said, This sign, I'm wrapping up now, this sign shall follow them that believe. Do you know what that means? That means there is always something following you as a report card to what you believe. You don't drive it by saying, Go away. I can know what you believe by seeing what is following you. These signs, there are always signs that follow the believing. If I see failure, defeat, curses, yoke, setback, rising and falling, it is not just that they were programmed by the devil. Those things are the podcast. They are following what you believe. You don't drive them by saying, go away. You drive them by adopting a new mindset. So Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Look the possibilities that follow Jesus as he went to death. Healing, greatness, glory, splendor. The, the tribute collectors came to embarrass him during one of his teachings and he said, Go to the sea and catch fish. The first fish you catch, bring it, pour it out of his mouth and salt his neck so that they will leave us in peace. 
The same of which I am complaining that nobody likes me. Maybe it's because I miss every day somebody is being saved of this Abuja, including today. Why is that person not you? You need to be angry and say, oh, I need to show this myself through knowledge. The same law is rich unto all. It's because everybody is not my tribesman. Who was the Daniel's tribesman in Babylon that lifted him? Who was Joseph's tribesman in Egypt? No, it is what you know. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand what I'm teaching? If you get angry, your spirit you can begin to program. No, my life has carried too much shame and reproach. I need to start reprogramming this that my life becomes an effulgence of God's glory. Apostle, I came from a bad background. Even Jesus Christ, Nathaniel, that can anything good come out of Nazareth? They know not, neither will they understand. The Bible says they walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. For instance, as a man of God, you are finding out that nobody wants to listen to you, and you are saying people don't like coming to my church. Now, I respect you and I love you, but can they come to your church and you give them quality communication of doctrine? Have you worked on yourself to be that sound? You are quoting scriptures that are wrong, you are not serious, you have not settled down to understand doctrine. If I ask you as a man of God, list for me the seven foundational pillars of the Christian faith, can you list it? If I ask you to break the Bible according to its components, can you do it? If you're not doing it, don't sit down and say, God, God is not stupid to send people to come and sit down and you waste their time. They shout amen and go back with no result. He loves you, but he loves his people too. So if you are trusting that God brings membership, you start to show yourself approved unto God. A one man that needed not to be ashamed. An intelligent man who not carry his wife and children and come to submit themselves under your leadership only to waste their time. No, religion is not supposed to turn intelligent men into fools. Are we together? There are many young men in ministry and all they are chasing is anointing. No stability of doctrine, no intelligence, no precision in your communication. That's why they are suspected for being a habitist because your approach is controversial, it's not more compliant, there is no intelligence in it. No, ladies and gentlemen, listen, there is a responsibility component to greatness. You are a man of God and all you know is just the exegesis of scripture. That's wonderful. Do you not know that ministry is a composite of many things? There is administration, there is leadership, there is financial intelligence, there is emotional discipline. Which one do you not know? If businessmen come around your church, for instance, can you talk to them? Or will you sit down and you think these people will build their lives and then come and waste their time? Like, no, it doesn't work that way. What manner of man is this? You must become such a man that people look at your life and there is an effulgence of the glory of God. It is not an impartation. Listen to me. Please listen. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of the kingdom. Three keys. Let's wrap up. One, prayer. Two, an intensive study of the world that translates to understanding. Because the Bible says, ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Are you ready for the third key? The third key is called obedience. Please write. It is another word for faith. Many believers would like to call it faith. But faith in one word is obedience. Please say obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. Let me show you two scriptures. Job 36 and verse 11. Job 36 and verse 11. Let's read together. One, two, read. If they will obey and serve him, uh -huh, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. One more time. Uh -huh. If they obey, if they obey and serve him, if they obey, obedience is a big deal in the spirit. Isaiah 1 19. Or 
let's look at Deuteronomy for sake of time. Deuteronomy. Okay, let's look at Isaiah 119. Don't know many I have. And then Deuteronomy 28. Isaiah 119 says, If they open, if ye be willing, look up this. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall do what? Let's look at it. Every land has good, but it was instructed to only deliver its good to those who are willing and obedient. There is treasure in every land. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Abuja as a place has been programmed to deliver good to certain people. It's a divine instruction. It will not disobey. But there is a certain kind of believer it is looking for. And if that believer is not you, you may never eat the good of the land. You can be in Abuja, respectfully speaking, for 10 years, 20 years, and never eat the good of the land. And a stranger steps in, and the land begins to answer. You know why? Here's the secret. If you be willing and obedient, obedient to work in keeping with the patterns, like I taught you, obedient to work in keeping with the principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, the Bible says you shall eat the good of the land. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's just read 1 and 2. The full text is from verse 1 to 12. But let's read 1 and 2. This was a strong admonishment. He says, And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Is that in the Bible? It says to observe and to do. Take note. Not just to hear. To observe and to do all the commandments which I command you this day. That the Lord will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Did you know that many years ago I read this scripture and I believe what I read? I read this scripture from one small room and I believed it. That I shall be exalted above the nations of the earth. That the Bible is not lying. In obedience you can transit. You know, respectfully speaking, when, when, when we live in a world where when people see those that God has helped to assume any position of greatness, people begin to bring words like you are lucky or you are fortunate or you are this. Um, I tell you all of that is nonsense. There are no more in the spirit. Once you find the keys, the keys are ladders, they are lifts, they can lift you and transit you to enviable destinies. That is our heritage in Christ. You shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. He says, and all these blessings, how many of them? Prosperity, increase, influence, power, grace, the gift of men, all these blessings shall come to thee. Did he say you will look for it? If you are looking for it, you are already in error. You were never supposed to look for it. It was designed to be attracted to a certain kind of believer. I always say that success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by who you are becoming. You see? It's not just what you do. Your becoming is greater than your doing. You only do when you have become. The people that do know their God knowledge, they shall be, then they shall do. The people that do know, they shall be, then they shall do. If you are doing without knowing, you are wasting your time. If you are doing without being, you are wasting your time. Are we together? Yes. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. The Bible says they looked up to him and their faces were lightened. There is no shame when you look at him. Listen, let me tell you something. God is speaking to someone. He sent you to this conference to let you know that you can begin to rewrite the narratives of your life. And can I tell you, it does not take a long time. It is at the pace of your diligence. If you make up your mind to partner with the Holy Spirit, taking advantage of that enabling grace, He embraces you. You don't need to be afraid. Yours is to be prepared to obey. The power to obey will be released upon you. The prodigal son did not have the power to change himself, but he had the power to take action. He could not restore himself, but he could take steps. Apostle, 
I want to become a man of God that brings glory to the name of the Lord. I want to become a businessman that rise. God has raised me to be a helper in my family. I have seen this in my dreams. I have seen it in my visions. Congratulations. But it will remain a dream until you take advantage of the grace of God. I am what I am now to understand by the grace of God. I am what I am as a preacher by the grace of God. I am what I am. But it says this grace was not showered on me in that I labor more than you all. That means the more I participated in obedience, the grace was being multiplied. As I woke up in the night while you were sleeping and as you were studying, you were opening doors for grace to come. As you were buying the truth, as you were following them through faith and patience and obtained the promise. Are we together now? Yes. This is how it works. Apostle, I want the grace for healing to come upon me. Have you studied any material on healing? Do you understand the healing move of God upon the earth? Have you respected anybody carrying that grace? Or do you just want to assume that just by desire it will land on you and you will suddenly become a Cleveland Coleman or become an Donald Roberts? It doesn't work that way. For you to become a professor in the university, there are references and materials and people that you study. Am I right on that? Yes. Even if the area where you are going to be given a PhD is an area that has not been explored, you will still make reference to other authorities within the entire field of study. Listen, our academic practice and even our diplomatic and professional practice should teach us how spiritual things work. We're going to pray. And grace and peace can be multiplied to men, turning ordinary men to be carriers of the glory of God. You've conversed for this conference, many of us making tremendous sacrifices. Do not allow this conference to wrap up and then you go back and they ask you, How was the conference? Wow, wonderful. Preacher after preacher came. What happened to you? I laughed. I laughed. I wrote a few notes and went back to my yesterday. At this conference, you should be able to wave your yesterday goodbye and say you have exhausted your community now. That is time for a new season. Yes. yes. You can define your possibilities, define your realities. Let me recap on the three keys again. One, the ministry of prayer. You can pray yourself. To become a transcendent version of you in the spirit. Two, you can submit yourself to learning by the truth. Get quality materials that are from people, men and women who have through labor, sacrifice, and alignment have found the keys that lead to the outcomes that you desire. And number three, now that you know these things, he says, happy are you if you do them. Knowledge without action will only leave you frustrated. For the Bible declares, Paul speaking to the Hebrew church, he says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them. He says, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. He says, there remained a rest for the people of God. That today, if you hear his voice, do not have in your heart like it was in the provocation of the wilderness. When you hear his voice, if it be thou, Peter said, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. He would have said, wow, intelligent. Um, you are such a compassionate savior. I should walk on the water and come and meet you. He got up and began to walk. And God's integrity was there to back him. Because Jesus asked him to come, even when his faith was failing, he still took responsibility and helped him. can tell you stories after stories. I'm not one who is a good storyteller. I don't like talking about my life a lot because sometimes people misunderstand it from cry. But the things that I'm sharing with you are not just Bible study materials. They are a testament of this man standing before you. I know what it means to access the grace of God. I know what it means to be helped by God. That name Ebenezer, I understand it. That God can help a man God can help men. God can place honor upon a man that your life can become 
an effulgence of the grace and glory of God that your life becomes a Bible study manual that someone looks at your life and begins to learn God layer after layer. This is what God deserves. That at the end of it is not supposed to lead to pride and all of this, but that with humility you project Christ in such a way. I hope you know that the world is depending on our definition of Jesus to them. The world will have to interpret Jesus from the lens of the believer's experience. Please listen carefully. The world will interpret Jesus from the lens of the believer's experience. If I present a lopsided Jesus, if I present a selfish Jesus, which now is a reflection of the gaps in my understanding of the kingdom, I will corrupt the understanding of a non-believer. There are many who have misrepresented Jesus in many ways because we have not had a holistic capture of the ways of God. So, if I use your life to interpret Jesus, will I love him? If I use your testimony to interpret Jesus, will I be saved? Can I see the excellency of the workings of God in your life? Is it alluring enough to bring me to Jesus to surrender all? Look at the woman at the well. Last scripture. The Bible talks to us about one woman who had five men in their lives, in her life. The sixth not even being her husband. She innocently went to fetch water. And she meets this stranger there, and then a discussion begins. Jesus began to reveal several things, and his precision and accuracy got her concern. And she said, I perceive you are a prophet. Go and bring your husband. He said, No. Why? 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 What's the issue? He said, Well, I have five men, the sixth in my life is not even, you know. And Jesus came in as that seventh man. When Jesus was done talking to her, watch what happened. The power that emanated the glory of God, manifestation, grace personified. The Bible says she left her fetcher, left the issue of water, beside the Bible, and ran to the city and told everybody, saying, it doesn't matter what you want to call me, call see a man who has told me everything I have done. Her, her witness was so convincing. The people said, we know this woman. Let's go and find out. She cannot be joking. This level of confidence from this woman. And the Bible says, when they came and they met Jesus, they never came because they believed in Jesus. They came because they believed in the woman who believed in Jesus. But when they met him and encountered him, they said, now we believe. Not because of her. We have seen for ourselves. That from this conference, in one week, God opens a door for you. Favor, increase, mercy, speed, restoration. All in one week. Listen, that becomes too notable for anybody to say it's just coincidences. Someone will follow you. I was there when they said unto me, there is always something that says, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Can I tell you, many people who come to church do not come because they believe in God. They believe in the witness of those who believe in God. But when they get there, and they are welcome on the same. When they are welcome, when they sit down, then they encounter the God of the Bible. The Lord appeared uh, uh, to Samuel and Shino, even by his God. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is waiting for your witness. For the manifestation of the glory and the grace of God in your life. To reveal Jesus. And we are going to pray. As we step into this prayer session, three minutes and we are done. I want you to take the time to cry out to God. When I do ask you to stand, just listen to me. But when I ask you to stand and pray, please minimize looking around. This is take it as a, a, a destiny business. Some of you, while you are praying, the Lord will be bringing to your mind, like I said yesterday, nobody in your family has had the opportunity to hear what you are hearing. You are the one God is raising. Don't disappoint their expectation. God is counting on someone. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Yes. That at the end of this conference, you can come and meet the organizers and say thank you. I sat down for two days, three days, four days, and that one week was the wisest investment in 2023 in my life. That I came, I submitted myself to strategic spiritual knowledge. Look what God has done in my life now. Can I tell you, nobody argues with genuine word sponsored results. Word sponsored results. 
when the word of God sponsors your results, you do not fear it because there is longevity. Are we together? So whilst you are seated, I want you to look at your life. What aspect of the glory of God is yet to find expression in your life? For some of you, you love the Lord with all your heart, but your finance is in a sorry state. And let me challenge you before you lie to yourself that money is not important. Cast that spirit and that information, two of them, cast them out of your mind. Because if you ever tell yourself that financial resources are not important, you will marvel and wonder at the limitation it will cost you in your life. How about faith? If you drop a billion naira and you drop favor, I will pick favor a million times and not even look at this. But by the time I'm leaving that place, you'll find a million naira following me too. You see, the favor of God is a mystery. I can spend weeks after weeks teaching you on the favor of God. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Here, the set time is come. The reality of the times that we live in today would require us accessing superior systems of advantage, I call them, because walking by the natural cause of things, there is no advantage in our world again. Sociologically speaking, are we together? And as we know, the price of things like you know, right now you want to take a flight from yet, I mean, you can imagine. The flight to many places is the house rent of many places within the nation. How does an average individual who is earning a salary survive on that? Every other thing is growing, perhaps, except your income. Every other thing is growing. And you know, with all these things come depression. You see people talking to themselves while they are driving. You think they are on food. They are talking by themselves till they die. They go and hit a tree and die out of frustration. The Bible says when you see that darkness, confusion, upon you the glory of the Lord will arise. Then it says Gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your eyes. Can we arise and pray? God has ordained us to be vessels of glory. God has ordained us to be vessels of grace. Conduits, transmitters of his glory. I'd like you to lift your voice and begin to thank God for all that you have heard today. The hearing of faith is connected to the working of miracles. The hearing of faith is connected to the working of miracles. Someone is praying. <laughs> Let me just remove it. 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 Let me Now, um, we we'll do a few things very quickly. Number one is I'm standing in faith with you. I want you to mention every area in your life, honestly speaking, where you have not seen the glory of God find expression. And I'd like you to insist that from this day forward, and in the name of Jesus and on account of this conference, that the glory of God begins to find expression. Go ahead and pray. Mention sure that area. Is it your health? Is it your marriage? Is it your children? Is it your finances? Is it your spiritual life? Go ahead and pray. I desire to see a manifestation of the glory of God. I desire to see a manifestation of the power of God, the mighty hand of God. Someone is praying. The glory of God upon the tree, the glory of God upon the sky. Our eyes and shine says, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. The glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Pray, concerning your health, concerning your finances. 
Final prayer points, and then I pray for you. Your way to obtain grace from God, the grace to pray genuinely with seriousness and determination. Number two, the grace to be a spirit of knowledge, strategic knowledge. Number three, the grace for obedience. Your way to cry out for deep grace to pray, grace to submit to the work of God, and grace to walk the world to obedience. Lift your voice and pray. Let it be for the depth of your heart. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. The way is to pray. Speak the power of the end of the end of always to pray and not to fail. The way is to study the word of God. All things were made by you. And without you, there is not anything made by the Spirit. In the name of life, and that life is in the spirit. The place will be that if you can believe that the good that you will eat from the people will die. I have to recognize you joy in every disobedience. Let your obedience is in the body. Um, I believe that the gospel and the ministry of the word and of the spirit must always come with the evidence of an encounter with the grace of God, an encounter with the power of God. This is the difference between the communication of commonly devised fables. Are we together? The Bible says in Acts chapter 8 when you read from verse 5 that Philip went to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. And then the Bible says the people with one accord, verse 6, they gave heed to the things that he spake, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. Hearing and seeing. When it has to do with the communication, the ministry of the word, you don't just hear, you hear and you see. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The end of your believing is an experience. The things we have heard, the things we have seen, but also the things that our hands have handled. You do not doubt what you have handled. That is why when he met doubting Thomas, he said, trust your hand to my sight. Have an experience of my resurrection, that it is true I am alive. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. There are some of you who are here who are sick in your body, some of you oppressed by all kinds of satanic things. All of these things, sicknesses and the rest, they, they are structured to inhibit the manifestation of the glory of God in the life of a man. But you see, when Jesus comes, he never leaves people the way that he met them. No. There's no reason why you should walk back with that sickness, that criminal illness, that satanic oppression. For the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, that he went about doing good, healing all, not some, all they that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. For God was with him. For God was with him. In Matthew chapter 10, 
when you read verse 7, Jesus gave them a mandate, sending them two by two, and he says, as you go, preach, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8 says, you demonstrate the validity of that kingdom by healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, casting out devils, and he says, ensure that when you go, give freely, because you have received freely. Some of you may not be seeking money, but there are all kinds of demonic hindrances. Paul said, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Favor desire to come to you, rest desire to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Are we together? And for some of you, what you need is that prophetic declaration by this time tomorrow to program a climate of favor and a climate of grace. My encouragement for you is within the next five minutes, drive unbelief from your life and believe Jesus for all that is necessary to make you become a vessel of glory indeed. Lay your hands on your body if you're trusting God for healing or you're studying it for someone. I want to pray for you. You may not have a time to take testimonies, but I want you to start believing. Believe it. Don't doubt. Believe. The power of God is real. And I believe among the many things that have happened here is a strong impartation. Somebody must carry a grace who did not come into this place with you. Let me pray now. Lay your hands or trust in God for a miracle. Some doctors report, whether for yourself or for your loved ones, I want you to believe. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone at the sound, under the influence of my voice, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I cause the spirit that is behind every infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ. the spirit behind every infirmity in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let me pray for you I'm seeing a lot of oppressed people this is what I'm seeing in my vision and I want to pray for you when I begin to see the wind and the fire of God moving then I know that someone's deliverance has come I want to pray for you now there are some of you who are under all kinds of satanic yokes. Your life has been trapped down. I want to release you right now. I was praying when I just saw that and I, I just thought to minister that deliverance. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. There is a lady and a gentleman I just saw the power of God coming on two of them. Is this impartation that will begin the process of deliverance and the ministry of the Lord? I just saw fire. Bring them out. A lady and then a gentleman. Now I begin to pray. I'm going to declare the name of Jesus Christ. And I want you to shout the name of Jesus, my Lord. I'm seeing fire in this place. There are all kinds of altars and leaves that I must give you. Thank you, Jesus. One, two, three. Shout the name, Jesus. Jesus. I will put that devil. Let her go down. Let her go down. Let her go down. Let her go down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go down. Please, if someone is coming and wants you, you bring them. There's a reason why I ask that you bring them. You don't have to be an usher. Just help them very quickly. I decree and declare. I'm seeing shades on the hands of people. I will start the battle. I will show you the battle. Let the battle be the battle. That shade is broken now. It's broken now. It's broken now. It's broken now. It's broken now. The power of the Holy Spirit. I declare the Lord that shall be broken. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. I'm hearing your name, Jennifer. Is there someone with that name, Jennifer? I'm still praying, Jennifer. 
the grace for speed. I'm seeing so people. Please help them to start running. I release them to wait right now. I see that the speed for the salvation by this place. I'm canceling the delay. Delay, delay, delay. I will stop you at the post right now. Delay your lives. Delay your finances. I will do it right now. But I will pray for you. Who is John? John. I'm hearing a name, John. John. Please make sure there's a lady wearing red. The power of God is coming on you. You are the God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is saying it's a new season. Where is that lady? Please bring her. She's wearing red. The power of God is coming on her right now. The Lord is asking you to prophesy to her. Who is John? What do you do, sir? Ah? Huh? I want to pray for you. My dear, look at me. Where are you from? Ah? Huh? I want to pray for you that this yoke of darkness that has tied your family in the name of Jesus, I release you from it now. So the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. He says, and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. I prophesy to someone here that everything that has tied down your life and blessing is set free for you this moment. It says free for me this moment. It says free for me this Jesus Christ, everything that makes you to see good things and never handle them. You keep seeing things, but your hand never handles them. I decree and declare, sir, please look at me. I'm looking at you, please don't be embarrassed. This shame and reproach that is on your life, the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that is rolling it away. Jesus Christ. There's someone right now who will shout under their mountain loud to the hearing of everybody. Please bring that person out. I just saw that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Now to the hearing of everybody, the Lord Himself is bringing deliverance even for that family. I've seen someone, your father, I don't know if it's arthritis, but the man cannot walk. It's, it's almost as if he's paralyzed. Who is that person? I want to pray for you. Where is he? Where is the village now? I will pray for you. Do you believe in the power of God? Yes. Father, every time you reveal this for redemption, I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing there are three people here. The call of God is mighty upon your life. I'm seeing a strong prophetic call. There is a gentleman here particularly. God has been working on you, but there is a man to reach you for your life. And the Lord is telling me, stay for that grace to locate you. Whatever you know, you don't have to go out and pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where that gentleman is, I don't know where that day is, but every man, the man who is coming apart, they break the post of the Bible. I ignite you, let the fire come upon your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we see that place, the eyes are seen, we 
receive the peace, the eyes that see, the ears that hear, the eyes that see, the ears that hear. In the name of Jesus, your ministry will never be the same. I am empowering you by the Spirit. I am to vote the prophetic from within your spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This man wearing red suit. Are you a man of God? Ah, yeah, yes, from Joss. From Joss, we came from Joss. Yes, sir. Are you a minister? That's what I'm asking. I'm an evangelist. I'm an evangelist. Yes. I want to pray for you. Listen to me. Do minister with integrity. There is a mighty healing grace that the Lord is asking you to be part of God. I stretch my hands upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, like fire, like the fuel of heaven, may that mountain rest of you. May that place of the house, signs and miracles, in the name of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is asking you to pray for someone. There is a spirit that is in your life. You keep going. You keep going right now, but even embarrassed by how much you are going. And it's only God that will deliver you from what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. You see, the spirit of God brings liberty. Liberty. This is not just some Pentecostal entertainment. Oh, I want you to believe. Take your mind away from whatever it is and believe. He says that by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet they were preserved. Everyone here who is holy, I call upon the God of my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, may God bless them, may God bless sisters to be brought to this country. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I pray for everyone who is sick in your body right now. Every blood condition here. I'm seeing fire coming on someone. I just mentioned blood condition. I don't know who that is. This man will be. Oh, God. Take a place of me. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. Oh, God, in the perfection. Cleansing of your blood. Every genotype issue will change it now. Everything that has not been planted by my father in the name of Jesus, I am rooted out of your body. I am rooted out of your body. God is showing someone to have prayer. If God go to the hospital, the prayer does not stop you from going to the hospital. But I think you need to go with what I am saying. You may need medical attention. This is a severe case of prayer. But in the name of Jesus, let the mercy of God rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, if there is anyone here who has been trusting God for the future of the world, I don't care how God it has been. By the power that raised us from the dead, let us forgive all of your loved ones and pour into the pain of life. So to the Lord, let us be trusted. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone the Lord is showing me. Is it, is it your father? You lost your father. This is not your people. It's not more than uh, maybe a month or two. Is it your father? I've seen a man and then I've not seen the man again. The Lord is asking me to pray and remove the spirit of untimely death. Because you keep seeing dreams of dead people, people who are not God. What fellowship has the dead got to do with the living? I don't know who that person is, whether you are here falling online. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I prepare the church. Every manifestation of death that is following you, about the push of the dead, about the push of the dead, is separated from death. It's separated from the spirit of death. In the name of Jesus. Is it possible that there might be people out there who might 
not be part of the NIS and are here trusting God for jobs. Can I pray for you? Believe God. Believe. In the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for job. That doubles as those trusting God for promotion. Maybe by some sentiment they refuse to leave you to the place that is due you. In the name of Jesus, the one who lives in by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare everyone in the name of John here may my God set it to now. May my God set it to now. May my God set to now. May my Every power of witchcraft connected to ancestry, connected to satanic foundation, in the name of Jesus, I uproot it from your life now. I uproot it from your life now. By the power of the eternal covenant, I uproot it from your life now. In the name of Jesus. Now receive every prophecy that I bring to you as coming from the Lord. Every door that has been closed over your destiny, I stand by the door who called me and I pray with you. This door, let that door be open now. Let that door be open now. Salvation of doors, Marita, I got the roof, I think I'm just a part. Marita, doors be open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you have tried and failed, you have tried and tried and failed. It's a master, we have toiled all night. Nevertheless, at thy word, I empower you. Return for victory. Return for victory. Return for victory. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. I want to call your blessing in the past by prophecy. Whether in Abuja, in Lagos, in Nigeria, across the globe, everyone who has been obeyed by God and of God to participate in your life, to see me that the glory of God is within in your life, whether it's the north, the south, the east, and the west, I call them to appear in your destiny. I call them to show up in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray over your finances? In the name that is above all names, whatever is making money to fill in your hands, whatever is making for the completion that brings sorrow, brings financial stress and pain. In the name of Jesus, the creative ideas, the strategic connections, and access to the great, receive all this in the name of Jesus. I prophesy Psalm 112 The Bible says, This is the man that shared the Lord, who delights greatly in his command, that his seed shall be mighty upon them. It says, The generation of the upright shall be blessed. It says, Wealth and riches shall be his house, and his righteousness endures forever. And command wealth and riches to be in your house. I pray for your children, none of them will fall by the wayside. Jesus Christ, I'm going to go to the in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me see favor upon your life. Favor is when God raises men, desire to partner with your success, to see to it that you have an accelerated transition into the place of destiny. I declare and declare the kind of favor you have never seen. Let it rest upon you. 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 I declare that this hands are lifted. Nothing lies in those days. Nothing lies in those days. Please, Lord, 
I stand by the prophetic. I have opened the book of remembrance. Everybody will help you who has supported you. Everybody who you have been part of the writing. Then let the right person be support you and let you be busy. Let the book of remembrance be open. Let the book of remembrance be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone that has been struggling to look for a visa. You've come and you did not get. You've come and you did not get. The Lord is asking me to prophesy to you. I stand by the God who told me, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, return back and watch God surprise you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to make an altar for all of you who are in front of your testimonies remain permanent in Jesus' name. Please help me understand. Let's make a mighty movement. I believe in Jesus and I believe in salvation. I believe in the encounter with the Son of the living God. The Bible says that there is no other name on that heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. It is impossible that in a gathering like this, that there will be none that was sent by God to encounter salvation. When it has to do with salvation, the grace of God that brings salvation appears unto all men. I want to make two calls in one. For the one who have never genuinely and truly consciously made Jesus Lord of your life. Perhaps you've been around church, perhaps you've even had church responsibilities. That's not what I'm asking you. The Bible says, this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And it says, this life is in the Son, and that whosoever had the Son had life. Number two, I, I want to pray with those who, for whatever reason, your Christian experience has gone down. You will know that this was not your way with God. And for whatever reason, your life has gone haywire, and you are crying for that spiritual restoration. I'm going to count one to five. I want you to very boldly. Leave your seat. Don't wait for anybody to be the first to come. Make your way to the front here in the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate them as they come. One, start for space. Two, don't sit back when the Holy Ghost is telling you you should be here. Three, at the count of five, and I begin to pray. Four, Also, I'm a good person. I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them. You can be saved genuinely and have the assurance of salvation. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I salute every one of you, whether you are dedicating your life to Jesus or making an initial decision. May I lead you to pray this prayer with me, say, Lord Jesus? Tonight, I've heard your word. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight till forever, I am your child. I walk in the newness of life and I walk in your grace. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for this precious people. Some have come to rededicate their lives to begin a, a renewed commitment. Others are making this decision for the first time. In the name of Jesus, all the same, I am praying that your hand will rest upon them. The anointing is coming on one of you in front here. I just saw that light. One of you in front. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, weep not. This is what I'm hearing. I don't know what that means to you. Weep not. Weep not. That the cry has come to an end. This is what the Lord is saying. Weep not, the cry has come to an end. God is able to wipe the tears of all who cry. And he says, weep not. I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead that your sins are forgiven and the Lord gives you a new beginning from today. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Now, whether you are dedicating your life to Jesus or making a first time decision, May I please request that you, is there someone to follow? Just have a word that will sort you out, those that are dedicating their lives, I'm sure that will allow you to return, and then those making the decision for the first time, 
you have a system that follows you up. But all together, let me plead with you that you just follow the counselors in one minute. Let's celebrate them as we go. You have a lot with you. You will be happy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, one final assignment, and then I am done. I want to speak over this building and to speak over um, the NIS, and then I am done. Thank you for your patience. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. I want to speak over this building. I want us to read it together and then we'll wrap up. Ezra 6 14. Is it possible to have it projected media? Please help us very quickly. Ezra 6 14. 6 1 4. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. I want us to read it as a prophetic word over this structure. Ezra 6 and 14. Hallelujah. While they're pulling that up, let me pray over everyone here who is an official and officer. Here you have traveled, whether in this command, the headquarters, or any other command. You are an immigration officer, any diplomatic agent in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Let the blessing of heaven rest upon you. Yeah. As you serve us, as you serve this nation, in the name of Jesus, whether here in Nigeria or any part of the world, wherever you are stationed and located, in the name of Jesus, we send you as light, we send you as salt, we declare that you will shine the light of Jesus Christ. You will not die while serving. And say to me, you will not die while serving. You will not die while serving. You will not be a victim of kidnap. You will not be a victim of unbroken. You will not be a victim of bloodshed. The Lord will preserve you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for the entire executives of the NIS, from the Controller General to all down the cadre, by reason of the church in this environment and in this place. Let the purposes of God for NIS stand. Every conspiracy of darkness will silence it once and for all. In the name of Jesus. Let's read Ezra 6 14. Ready? One to read. And the elders of the Jews will be there, and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they build them and finish it. According to the commandment of the God of Israel, and according to the commandment of Cyrus and of Darius and of Tarsus. Now, it says that they build and they prosper, not just because of bricks and mortar, through the prophesying. In the name of Jesus, the hand that began this building will be alive when it is completed. You know where I'm praying this prayer? There was a curse upon Jericho that anybody who reviews Jericho will build it with the blood of his firstborn and finish it with the blood of his lastborn. I want to take you with If there is any pronouncement of this plan that has been made, that those who begin this work will need to see in this year by council in the name of Jesus. We call for supernatural resources. The same place that was on the Himalaya, the copier that made the key to giving all the resources he needed to build the walls in Jerusalem. May that place be released upon the Christian community. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as you are building the house of God, may God you build your own house there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we speak to this people with the plan that in the name of Jesus Christ, call this time next year. In the name of Jesus, it will be a project that is already long finished. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for the church and the blessing that the Lord gives to our Lord in Jesus' name. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes. 
and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.